Okay, guys, let's talk measurement. As you guys know, and we've talked about this a little bit, and you've talked about it in science, different parts of the world use different measurement systems. So, for example, here in America, we use, for example, in the kitchen, cups. But somebody in the rest of the world, they might use ounces instead of cups. Or, um, if you know, in Europe, in other parts of the world, they don't drive in miles, they drive in kilometers. And we're just going to take a short look at these. This right here is an example of a conversion chart. This one is for kitchens. And most commonly, this is where you are going to have to convert different measurements. Not always. For example, if you are going into, say, the um, mechanical world or science or anything like that, you are probably going to have to be familiar with how to convert things over. So right here, this is just a very basic one. I have it in my classroom, and you can use this as a guide. Now, a lot of your books, and in my school, the Simple Solutions books, they are going to have this chart for you. And if you can't find one, look online. There's all kinds of resources out there. So we're going to kind of do a brief look into measurement in this video, and hopefully this will help you on your assignment. All right, let's talk lengths for a little bit. And this right here, this is what I'm talking about for a conversion chart. Again, check your textbook or online if you don't have one. I know most of you at this point are not familiar with a lot of different conversions yet, and that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our options. We have feet, inches, yards, and miles as a choice. We have to decide what is the most appropriate measurement for these objects. So let's look up one real quick. The height of a house. Now, we're going to ask ourselves, are inches, feet, yards, or miles the most appropriate? We know that an inch is not very big. And we know what a foot is. We've seen a ruler before. Yards is a yardstick, which you've seen. And miles would be about where I live. It would be about from my house to town. So we know these basic measurements. So we know right away, a house is higher than an inch, a house is higher than a feet, and we know it's definitely not a mile high. So we're going to pick yards as our most appropriate measurement. Now, I can see you arguing feet and inches, but again, we are looking for a shortcut. We don't want to drag this measurement out longer than what it needs to. So we're going to go with yards on that one. Okay, so over here, you have a... Scale, 1 inch equals 100 yards. Now, you are going to find that different rulers are going to measure a little bit differently. So, for example, when we were building our back porch, my dad was using two tape measures made by the same exact company. However, we found out very quickly when our measurements was off that one was about half an inch short, and that threw the whole thing off. So... If you are going to use a ruler for a measurement or a tape measure or whatever you are choosing to use, you need to make sure you're using that same tool throughout the whole project. Otherwise, it could throw your whole thing off. So up here, it tells us a scale. They're very much like a math scale. One inch equals 100 yards. So let me grab a ruler and we will measure one of these real quick. Okay, I got my handy dandy ruler. Now I am going to use this throughout the whole um, video so that way we get the same measurement every time. So here we have a map of, it looks like a carnival, and we have to measure the hot dog stand to the roller coaster. So I'm going to find my hot dog stand, and these two lines, or these two dots at the end of your line, that's what you're measuring from. So we're going hot dog stand to roller coaster, and I'm going to do this backwards so that way I don't have to turn you guys upside down. So it is about two and three-fourths inches. So that's what I would put for my first step. Now we're going to go up here and convert. So we have one inch is 100 yards. 
So this would come out to be about 275 yards. Remember, a fourth equals 25. Think about your money. All right? So length. Now this is where we talk about metric. And this is what most of the rest of the world uses. And you've probably seen this in your science book. So once again, we have our handy dandy little cheat sheet up here. And we're going to look at the grasshopper this time. So the length of a grasshopper. Centimeters, meters, or kilometers. So we're going to look up here. So if you guys think about a, well, you're not focusing. Grasshopper, it's not very big. And we're going to have to find the smallest option. Now, if you think about a centimeter, which you've seen, it's the other side of your ruler. Most, whoa, where's the ruler, guys? Most rulers have a centimeter side, but not all. So a centimeter, if you look, is really tiny. A meter, think of your um, yardstick again. That's one meter. And then a kilometer is what meters change into if you get so far. And it's about five-eighths of a mile. So we know right away, kilometer, not going to work for a grasshopper. Meters, it could if it's a giant grasshopper, but this is a regular grasshopper. So we are going to use centimeters. Okay? Now we're going to jump over to weight. And once again, we have our little handy dandy cheat sheet. And like with measurement, you can find these conversions online or in your math book. So we are going to, let's look at an elephant. Now elephants are pretty big. We know an ounce is tiny. A pound, we know what pounds are. We use them for weight here in America. And tons, um, you may not be as familiar with tons, but the most common thing I like to think about is we have a lot of oil and gas traffic around here. It's those big white trucks. Those are ton trucks. So think about it. An elephant is probably closest to a truck's weight, so we're going to put two tons as our answer. And then over here, we're switching the metric. And once again, you have your handy dandy little cheat sheet. So let's look at a pencil. So think about your pencil you're using right now, or your pen, or whatever you are choosing to use. Our options are kilogram and gram. So one kilogram, if we look up here at our chart, is 2.2 pounds. And one thousand grams is one kilogram. Based on that, we know that a gram is much smaller than a kilogram. Now, think about a pencil. Is there any way it weighs about two pounds? No. So we have to pick grams. So a lot of these are going to have to be you thinking about that object in real life. And if you're unsure with any of these objects, by all means, you can absolutely Google the typical weight of an elephant and see which one best fits. And again, some of these you're going to be able to argue both sides, and that's okay. You just have to be able to tell me why you put that. I'm going to have to split this into two because I think I'm running on my time limit. So if not, I'll put it all in one video. So cap capacity. And this is more with that um, kitchen measurement that I showed earlier or in the last video I was talking about. This is liquid. So an example would be your cups, your pints, your liters, and so on, gowns. So once again, we have our little handy dandy cheat sheet. And this one's nice. It even includes some references, some visuals, so that way you can think a little bit. So in this one, we are going to have to convert. Uh, you're not focusing again. So I'm just going to, since this is what my camera is focusing on, 10 pints to cups. So we're going to look up here. There are two, pint, two cups and one pint. So the easiest thing to do is we have 10 pints. We know that it takes two cups to make a pint. So we're going to divide that in two, and it should be five cups. We were working this one out, the 16 quarts, the gallons, and that is four gallons, all right? So let's move on. So here it is again, same thing, but with metric. 
And once again, it gives you your little conversion. So we are going to, let's look at a swimming pool. So millimeters and liters. So we know it takes 1,000 milliliters to make one liter. Now a pool is pretty big typically. And this is not your little wading pool. So we are going to measure it in liters. But if we have something small, say for example, um, a cup of tea or coffee, I can't tell what that is. I'm assuming that this is your typical tea size. I'm not sure, but that's what we're going to assume. So we would measure that in milliliters. All right, so now we're going to look at comparing. And this is where it's going to mix metric and the American system up a little bit. So you're going to have to flip back and forth or look in your math book for these conversions. So we have, let's pick um, two liters, two millimeters. Now we just talked about liters and millimeters. We know that a liter is bigger than a millimeter. So we are going to go ahead and say that two liters is going to be our biggest. But down here we have a mixture. We have two liters and two gallons. Now this is where it can be a little bit confusing. So let me see. It does not really offer us a conversion method. But we can think about a two liter bottle of pop. That's what they typically come in. And a gallon of milk. Which one do you think would hold more? So stop and think about that for a little bit. Hang on. <laughs> 